Hey gang, it's one thing to start talking about these switches and drawings and on paper as well as these routers and all of these devices. It's time for us to start making this real because it's come time for us to start working with and dealing with the idea of how we operate with the Cisco iOS software itself. And we're going to realize very quickly that it's going to come to us in a number of flavors and a number of forms. But first, let's make certain that we understand all of the features and functions that are associated with iOS. Cisco created the Internet Network Operating System, which is going to be the software running on our switches and our routers in the context of the devices that we're working with to make certain that we had the optimum amount of granularity to be able to accomplish specific tasks. And in doing so, we're going to learn that there's going to be simultaneous or multiple methods that we can employ in many instances to do the same thing. And that means it's going to be incumbent upon us as network engineers and CCNAs to understand that we have those different methods and recognize why one may be used versus the other. Or in situations where we're told we can't do it one way, we need to know multiple methods to get things accomplished. That's going to become more and more prevalent in the confines of our studies when we start moving up the ladder closer to CCIE. But at CCNA, it's also something that we want to make certain that we embrace because it's going to be here that we're going to begin first interacting and working with the devices that we're responsible for understanding. Now when it looks at or when we operate with iOS, the Internet Work Operating System, its primary goal is to deliver network services to all of the Cisco products and platforms. Now it does this through a uniform command line interface, something that we were lovingly refer to as the CLI. In other words, no GUI, no graphical user interface. I mean, I'm a CCIE and I had to study for my data center when I decided to get it. I'm routing and switching, obviously, in data center. And working with the UCS, it's all graphical user. Working with collaboration, it's all graphical user. It's here in the confines of the routing and switching exam that we find ourselves dealing directly with this notion of CLI. And it's also going to be where we have the broadest, greenest field of opportunities and capabilities. And it's through the deployment of this no graphical user interface, command line interaction, that we get the capability of doing everything that we've been talking about. All the connectivity features for high speed traffic between devices, it's all there. Our security implementations, how we handle scalability, reliability, consistency, all of these elements are made possible by virtue of the fact that the iOS is a command line tool. In other words, we're not restricted to the capabilities of what a graphical user interface is going to tell us we can do. It's going to be the sky's the limit with regard to making configurations and being as granular and creative as humanly possible. And that's going to be the key benefit. That's the main element that CLI gives us, the command line interface. Now when we start looking at this, we need to understand that the command line interface extends features and capabilities. But it's also incumbent on isolating and defining the features that our devices are going to be understanding and capable of doing. So for instance, switches are going to have completely different feature sets than routers, and routers like vice versa are going to have different capabilities than the switches. We will find even in the confines of switches, we have something referred to as a layer three capable switch, which is going to be a switch that can work like a router. It doesn't have serial interfaces on it, but as I said earlier, serial interfaces are gradually going the way of the dodo. With using Ethernet as a WAN connectivity and a WAN solution, we're finding ourselves looking seriously and critically at switching fabric and trying to step back and understand how we can utilize it to optimize routing using wire speed capability. I mean, that's what the Nexus platform is in the confines of data center. Now, when we start looking at this, the main idea here is, is that the command line interface, the CLI, is allowed is where we enter our commands. So we'll go into the command line interface, and that's where we're going to interact with the iOS and by virtue of the way the iOS is, is configured, we're also going to be interacting with the hardware. 
Now the hardware configuration and the fact that this is command line gives us the capability of doing things like copy paste, doing configuration in notepad, copying it out of notepad and pasting it into the routers. Simplifies the process, especially when we have to do a lot of repetitive tasks on our routers and switches. Now looking at this, it's also important for us to understand that it's going to allow us access to specific features and commands. And we have two primary executive modes where we're going to use this. So when we start looking at this, what are the executive modes? And how are they going to be designated and delineated in the confines of the system? And also, what is the difference between user mode and privileged mode? Now, I, I, I can't wait any longer, okay? I'm going to dump us directly into some gear and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this from a 30,000 foot view with regard to how our independent systems are going to be operating. But I need to get into the proper config here, so just bear with me one moment. And I'm going to bring up some equipment, not that. Oh, goodness gracious. Bear with me just one moment. I guess I'm going to have to wait. That was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. There we go. Guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the router. Command line interface. We're going to be looking at routers. We're going to be looking at switches. As you can see in the top bar here that I have above me, I've got a ton of them. I've got nine routers, four switches, and three backbone devices that we're all going to be able to use and play with. I also promised you that I would illustrate how we can use GNS3 if you don't have the capability of accessing live gear. However, for the purposes of our switching conversations, I am going to make certain that all of my configuration examples take place on live switches. Now let's get rid of some of this stuff on here. Because of the things that I want to talk about, the main elements are going to be how are we going to interact with the operating system? How is the system going to allow us to connect? Well, if we operate under the assertion, let's draw a picture. Here's me. I'm a user. And what I can do is I can take my laptop, or my desktop for that matter, and I can actually connect to routers and I could connect to switches. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Notice right here I'm connected to a router and it gives me the capability of doing my management and my operations. And what is going to happen here is, is I'm going to have the breadth of all of the capabilities of these individual devices based on their current operating system, their IOS, the Inter Networking Operating System. Now what we're going to see here is, is on this device, I'm already authenticated. Let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a disable here. So I'm going to, um, let me clean this up just one second here. And I'm going to do a disable. And we'll come in, and I'll say type disable. Now what we see here is this greater than symbol. The greater than symbol tells me that I am in the user executive mode. Now inside the confines of user exec, I have access to different commands than I do at the higher privileged exec configuration. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called context sensitive help. It is your best friend and guess what? It's going to be available to you when you take the CCNA exam in the simulators. You can come up and press question mark and it's going to give you a list of the commands that we have in our particular configuration mode. Now what you're going to find here is, is there's quite a few but it's nowhere near the amount of commands that I'm going to have in the executive privileged mode or the privileged exec mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type enable and all that's going to do is enable privileged mode. Now by typing enable you're going to see a designation change. First we had the greater than symbol which told me that I was in user exec. Then I typed enable and the prompt changed. Now it's a pound sign. That tells me that I am in privilege exec mode. Now the big difference here is this. Let me log out and go back to my user interface. So we want to access hardware for instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this and then I'll come up here and say disable one more time. And let's say can I execute a show command to see particulars? Yes. 
Can I do, say, an example of show run? I want to know what the running configuration. What is the configuration in the RAM of this particular router at this moment in time? So I'm going to say show run. Show running dash config. And I'm going to hit enter. Notice it, gives, it doesn't give me access. Maybe I typed it wrong. Let's type show run. It's not giving me the access. So what I need to understand here is, is that in order to be able to access the configurational requirements and parameters that are currently running on this device, I need privileged mode to be able to do that. Again, to get to that mode, I type enable. I press enter. And now if I want to repeat that command, show running config, now what we see here is, is it's going to give me a detailed listing of everything that's configured on this device. Well, I say everything. All right, give me just one moment. I'm going to get rid of the drawings here because there's something I want to illustrate. Uh, all right, observe, show run, and I hit enter. All right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six screens. Well, five and, and four lines. Now, look here, I'm going to type show run all. The ALL keyword is going to give me hidden stuff. Not all the hidden configurations, but it's going to give uh, highlight surprisingly the amount of information that's actually stored in the running configuration. So I'm going to hit enter or return. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and I'm going to stop here. I'm just going to hit Q and quit. Now, this could go on for 40 some pages. Now, the reason being that I'm pointing this out is, is the fact that sometimes we forget what goes under what particular sections. So if I come in here and look at the specifics, I could type show, run, and I want to look at the information associated with my FAO0 interface. Oh, let's see, it's G on this, it's gigabit, G00. We just upgraded these routers. Now what we see here is pretty straightforward. We see the IP address that's been assigned, we see the duplex mode, we see the speed. I'm trying to see the speed. All right, now, if I were to come up and do the same configuration under all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show run all, and I'm going to say pipe. We'll get into pipes and extensions and filters. I just want to look specifically at this, and I, want to screw, I don't want to go through all that entire line of code. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say section, and then the section that I want to look at is going to be this one right here, interface gigabit 01. So I'm going to say copy, paste. And now what I want you to see is, is how much information we have just under this interface. This gives me a lot of default information and a lot of default configuration that's under the interface that I may or may not be aware of, depending on the level of knowledge that I have about iOS. So all I want you to do, the whole purpose of this particular portion of the demonstration, is simply to illustrate the fact that we have commands that aren't necessarily widely understood or widely known about. And it's going to be through the use of these commands that we can actually acquire a lot of information to educate ourselves. So for instance, if I were to come up and say, well, what is my default NTU on this particular interface? Or let's, let's pick another one. Let's say... Uh, let me scroll up. What's my default MTU? My default MTU is 1500 bytes. So this is going to be a way for us to be able to get that information. So all I'm trying to illustrate here is, is the fact that you need to know the nuances. You need to know the commands to unlock the information that we need to see and we haven't even started talking about doing basic configurations. I just have a working set of routers and I'm just walking through the examples. Now, we said that we wanted to look, about, look at switches. Well, let's cut over to a switch. Well, I'll go over here and go to Cat1. And on Catalyst1, I'm going to do the same thing. Show, actually, I'll say Disable, which is the reverse of the Enable command. Now, notice I'm in the User Privilege mode. I'm sorry, I'm in the User Exec mode. I need to be in privilege exec, so enable, press enter. 
And then if I come up here and do show run, what I'm gonna see here is, is I'm going to have the same features and the same commands. However, what you're gonna find here is, is that where on R1 I had two gigabit interfaces, on this particular device I'm gonna have 24 100, gigabit, 100 megabit connections and two gigabit connections. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is, is that we use the same commands on a router and a switch to elicit information about the configuration even though the configuration with regard to hardware is different. And that's the key benefit of IS, iOS. iOS gives us the capability of being able to use one language to interface and work with a number of the devices and we don't really have to know that much about them. And we can use the context sensitive help to be able to navigate through things. Now, when we go through and we start looking at it, the context sensitive help is really interesting. So, uh, we'll, we'll stick with the switch. Let's imagine that I want to do something with regard to an interface configuration, but I forgot the command. All right, let's say I wanted to just do a show like I did before. So I'm gonna do show interface and I'm gonna specify the interface or show run interface. So here's the, here's the output, here's the actual output, watch this. So I'm gonna type show run and I don't remember the command. Well, I can use the question mark. Now the question mark will give me every command that I can use now after this. Here's the command that I wanted to know. But let's say I knew part of it. Let's say I wanted to go interface and I use the question mark thereafter in and notice it gave me, gave me the only command that had I in in it. Now the other thing I could do is at this point what I have to recognize is, is that I also have the capability of using autocomplete. So I can come in here and I can press the tab button. At this point, I provided enough information for the system to recognize the fact that there's a command, but if I used autocomplete, so let me uh, grab the select bar here, and I use autocomplete, notice I hit tab and it inserts interface. A very, very handy feature. But what would happen if I didn't give it enough inf information? Well, as an example, notice right here, in this output, I have two commands that begin with I. I have identity and I have interface. Let's repeat our test. Let's go back up here. I'll go ahead and erase this. Let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type show run just the I. Now if I hit context sensitive help, now it's going to tell me I have my two commands, entity and interface. But what happens if I hit tab now? Notice it's just airing out. You can probably hear it, it's got a bell setting. It's going doop, 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 simply because I'm a Mac user. But there's not enough information for me to be able to accept the command. Now here's interestingly enough, if I went and I just said show run interface and I typed FA or FA01 and hit enter, it's provided enough information for the system to recognize that I wanted to use the interface command because I in there's no other options under this configuration mode. Now if I were to come up here and just put I and hit enter, what's going to happen is, is iOS is going to tell me I made a mistake and it's also going to give me a suggestion as to where I typed the wrong command. So let's just hit enter and notice what it did. It said invalid input detected at the tilde. The tilde is saying, well, the command that you entered, this doesn't make any sense. The reason it doesn't make any sense is, is that this command isn't recognized. So it can be a little misleading, but the main point here is, is this tilde Sometime before the tilde is where you made your mistake. So if I wanted to repeat that command and just say INT and hit it, now I've provided enough information. So when we go through and we start talking about context sensitive help, it's important for us to understand that it provides a list of all the commands and arguments that can be associated with a specific command. And it also gives us this console error messages like we're talking about right here that's letting me know that I used an improper syntax. Now, another value or another thing here is, is like I could use commands. Let's go back over to R1. Get rid of the drawing. And R1, let's just use another command, a very common command, show clock. Our device has a clock running in it. This is the actual time. It's UTC. It's Saturday, July 5th, 2014. So we've got a lot of information just right there. But what I want to do is I want to play around with the context sensitive help option. 
So let's say, can I come in here and what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to change the time. So first of all, I need to be in a configuration mode. So I'm going to type C and question. Well, here's all the commands that I can use that start with C. I'm looking at clock. But now what I need to realize is, is that I need to, I can do a little bit more. Let's hit an L. And then what we'll do is we'll just use the question mark. Well, that's two commands, clear and clock. So what happens when I do CLO0? Now it tells me I only have clock. Now I have enough to be able to auto-complete the configuration. Now, I don't know what command to use next. I mean, I, I, okay, I th okay, we've got clock, but what are my other options? Well, again, I can use context-sensitive help, and it's going to tell me I can read the calendar, I can set it, or I can also update the calendar. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at set. And then again, I can constantly use this context-sensitive help option to help me go through my configuration options on a command-by-command -command basis, making it very, very handy and also very useful with regard to configuring things. Now, you know, I've illustrated the fact that we have the context-sensitive help and we have all of the information, but we need to really address where information is being stored on our independent devices. So remember, I type show run. Now, the show running config is what's in my read-only memory on my device. But we also have a concept called a startup config. Let me, let me put some of this on the, on the actual console. So when we go, first of all, when I boot my device, when I turn my router or my switch on, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to look in the flash, which is actually referred to as NVRAM, non-volatile random access memory. In that particular storage session, there will be something referred to as the startup config. Now the startup configuration file is really important for us because the startup configuration file has all of my previous configuration stored on it and since it's in NVRAM, it's not going to expire or disappear when I lose power. So it's non-volatile. Now we also, the moment we boot up, what we're going to do is we're going to capture this and we're going to load it into ROM, read-only memory. Actually, uh, random access memory, excuse me. Now, once that's done, that's going to actually be called the running config. So at startup, we use this configuration. We load it into our memory, and what we do is we call it the running configuration. So as I make changes, as I fix things or, or configure things like interfaces, as I set up our routing protocols when the time comes, what we're going to end up happening here is realize it's going to be written to the running configuration. If I do not save the running config, what's going to end up happening is, is the running configuration, if the power goes off, will disappear, and all of my configurations will disappear with it. So what we end up doing is we want to copy it. So what we'll do is we'll say copy, run, start. So what that did is it copied the running configuration over top of the existing startup configuration, thereby ensuring that that configuration has now been saved in our RAM. So again, it gives us two states which, with regard to how we can store or how we can do our configuration. The other thing is, is that no changes that we made to the running config become permanent until we save them as the, into the startup config on our flash. So how do we look at that? How do we see it? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show run. So I'm going to say show running configuration. I'll hit enter and this is our actual running configuration. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say write erase. Now notice what this says, erasing the NVRAM file system. So that's going to be the startup configuration that I'm going to be deleting. And it's going to say it's going to remove all configuration files. Do I wish to continue? Yes, I want to take it out. So, so it erased the memory. So now if I come in here and say show run, I still have my running configuration because it's in my random access memory. However, if I come up and say I want to see the startup configuration, show 
startup config, notice it says the configuration is not present. Now the moment I come in here and I save my running configuration to my flash, it's going to create a new startup config. Let's do that. Let's just say copy run or running config to startup config. So space startup config and hit enter. So it's saving the configuration to the startup in the flash and now if I come up here and say show startup configuration, I now actually have a startup configuration. So the idea here is, is this is a twofold benefit. Well, it's, it's a benefit and it's a possible uh, problem. I've actually seen people that go in and do some troubleshooting and fix the network and they forget to save their configs. Six months later, the power goes out and the router goes, turns off and they did not save it, so that it has the old startup configuration. So what ends up happening is, is their configuration fixes and their troubleshooting disappear and the system's now broken since the router reboots or the switch reboots. So it's definitely something we want to do and we want to make certain that we save our configurations as we go to ensure that we protect our work product and also to protect our environments because power can be persnickety, especially in certain areas of the United States and around the world. So keeping in mind, we have the startup config and the running config. Startup loads the moment the device comes on. It takes a copy of the startup config and puts it into the RAM, the, the erasable memory that we have, the volatile memory, and then that is going to be called the running configuration. We can save the running config to the startup configuration, and that's how we protect and capture our work. Also, looking at how things are intera interacting, uh, like I said, we can show those different commands and we can look at those different commands. And it's also important for us to understand that we have different places where we can store information. So, we have Flash. Look here. I'm going to show Flash. Let's take a look at the, the Flash memory. This is the information that's stored on this device. Let me scoot over here. Here's my operating system that I'm running and here's my, here's my fix. But when we go through and we start looking at it, this is the iOS, this .bin file is the one that comes up, the system is running. But let's see here, let's say show flash, no colon, let's see show, where is my config on this device? Let's see show directory, no directory. Use the context sensitive help. So we got flash, context system again, let's take a look at all, or is it file system, nope, let's cut over to a switch, show flash, here we go, config.txt. So this one doesn't look like it's had anything saved on it either. Show running config show startup config. So again we have all of the different components. I was going to try to illustrate, well I can still do that. So let's say if I wanted to, there's different ways that I can save information. So let's come back over to the router since it's um, closer to being fully configured. So I could come up here and say copy running to the startup config and it's going to save that file. Do show flash or show flash. That's my license and my iOS. Let's come up here and do this. Um, that saves it to the flash. The other thing that I could do is I could actually say that I want to copy, say for instance, my running config. And what I want to do is I'm going to say I'm going to copy it to another device. I can use an FTP server. I can use an HTTP server. I could do HTTPS. I can configure it to where I could send it to a trivial file transfer protocol server. All of these servers are the things that we're going to be talking about later on. But the main thing that we need to understand here is I could have a server out somewhere in my infrastructure and I could be saving my configs to it as well as to my local device. That way if I lose my local device or my memory goes bad, 
say I'll use my compact flash card, what will end up happening is, is that my system is going to be protected because all I got to do is just pull it down from another device. And we can use different methods for that type or mode of connectivity. So I can copy the contents of my RAM or my NVRAM to different sections in my configs. Also what we're going to find here is that I have other features or other commands that I can employ. So if we take a look at what's happening in the confines of R1, we can navigate the console. I mean, I've already mentioned a number of elements. So let's come up here and say uh, show run and, oh no, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and do some configuration. We haven't done anything yet with that. So interface FAO G01 IP address 10 1 12 1. I'm just putting an address on here. It's already got one, I'm sure. Say no shut. And what I want to do is, let's say I wanted to revisit the commands. So rather than having to retype each of these commands, what I can do is I can actually hit the up arrow. By hitting the up arrow, excuse me, I just drew behind my head again. By hitting the up arrow, what I can actually do is I can refresh my, line, my configuration line. So if I go here and I hit up arrow once, it's going to be no shut. Go up here, it's going to be the IP address. Go up here one more time, it's going to be the interface command. Now let's go down one. And let's say I wanted to retype the command and I need to get to the end of the line. I can hit control A and control A will take me all the way to the end of the, the first line of the sequence. I can also do control E to go back to the line. So I can go through and navigate these lines very, very quickly, thus proving again how nice it is to be able to use the configuration. And also, I mean, we have control A, control E, we've got tab. I can come in here and I can uh, go through and do different components, like for instance, um, used to know a lot of these stuff. Uh, uh, backspace obviously takes out text. Um, control U. If I hit Control U, basically I'm going to erase the line. Also, Control C and Control Z. Control C is basically just break. So it aborts the configuration command and it also exits the configuration mode. So if I hit Control C, it's going to take me back to my privileged exec mode. And I can also go in and do the same thing. So config T, let's repeat our commands. Go back under the interface. Interface, I'll just say no shut. And then I can hit control Z. And control Z is also going to take me back. So just keep in mind, we have a number of options and features that we can use to interact with the gear. So just keep in mind that we can do all of these things. Another part that is really interesting that I want to highlight here is, is that we have the capability inside of iOS to be able to use filters. I said I'd mention it. I, I did it once already. So let me go ahead and make myself a little bit smaller here. And what I want to do is I want to illustrate the fact that I can type show run. And the show run command is going to give me that entire list. But if I want to look at my interfaces, I actually have to scroll down until I get to my given interfaces. So uh, we've already passed them. So as you can see, it's not that intuitive. And it's uh, have to scroll back up to take a look at it. I could use show run interface G00 and look at that specific interface. I could also say show run and I could use the pipe command and I can say show run and I want to begin at my interfaces. So interface and I'll say my G's. And notice it just immediately began where it matched. So it matched on interface, all lowercase, space capital G. Now what you have to understand is, is this is case sensitive. So if I come up here and I were to type G in lowercase, it's not going to provide me any output. We'll experiment with using these these filters and using these shortcuts uh, more and more as we do configuration because as we move through this course we're going to leave the theory and we're going to spend more time right here on the console as we're talking about how we do different configurations. I mean we won't just talk about DHCP or NAT or any of these other features. We're going to talk about it then we're going to configure it and we're going to configure it either in GNS3 or on live gear where, where and whenever possible. Again doing it where it will, the different applications will lend themselves most credibly to getting things accomplished. So as you can see, 
you know, there's a lot to know just with regard to interacting with devices. And the beauty of Cisco iOS is, is the fact that whether you're interfacing with a switch or you're interfacing with a router is relatively irrelevant to us, is, is pretty much irrelevant to us because the syntax is so similar, if not identical. Now what you're going to find is, is that when you jump from things like our integrated services routers running iOS and you jump over to iOS, iOS XE for instance or NXOS, then you may have to learn new commands and new syntax to accomplish the same tasks. But the idea of having iOS in place for so long simply has meant the fact that they can continually upgrade these devices and modify the platforms without having every time to make certain that we learn a new command language. So that's the beauty and the power of iOS, and I'll see you guys at the, in the next lesson. Bye-bye.